Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's July 16th. Did you know tarragon is an artemisia? Like all plants in the genus, tarragon is gray and silvery. Artemisias were sacred to Artemis, and there are over 180 species, all of them ornamental, some are medicinal, and of course, a small few are culinary. Tarragon is quite a graceful plant when fully grown. Never demanding, tarragon can stand some shade and a heavier soil. French tarragon has a subtler aroma and flavor than Russian tarragon. Tarragon has its own flavor. It tastes a little bit like anise. And tarragon is a vital ingredient for Dijon mustard. Fresh stems of tarragon can be cooked and eaten like asparagus. After an illness, tarragon tea stimulates the appetite. And drinking the tea before bedtime is helpful because tarragon is mildly sedative. The tea also helps with hyperactivity. And here's something valuable to remember about tarragon. The flowers do not produce viable seed, so tarragon propagates via root cuttings, rhizome sprouts, and stem division. As an example, the French tarragon commercial growers dig it up in the fall after the foliage has been harvested, and then they cut the roots into short pieces. Here's today's brevities. It's the birthday of Camille Corot, born in 1796 on this day in Paris. Corot was a French painter. He was famous for his landscapes, and he inspired the landscape painting of the Impressionists. Corot's quotes about painting are also inspiring to gardeners. Here's a little sample of his inspiring perspective on the natural world. Beauty in art is truth bathed in an impression received from nature. I am struck upon seeing a certain place. While I strive for conscientious imitation, I yet never for an instant lose the emotion that has taken hold of me. And here's a lovely quote from Corot about the end of the day. Everything is vague confused, and nature grows drowsy. The fresh evening air sighs among the leaves. The birds, these voices of the flowers, are saying their evening prayer. Imagine sitting beside Corot as he wrote, I hope with all my heart there will be painting in heaven. Gardeners would reply, I hope there is a garden. Today in 1907, Orville Redenbacher was born. Redenbacher was a USDA scientist and the co-creator of a new hybrid of popcorn called Snowflake. It was lighter and fluffier than traditional popcorn, and Redenbacher became a household name with his corny commercials. To this day, Redenbacher's popcorn is the number one selling popcorn in the world, and Nebraska produces more popcorn than any other state in the country. In unearthed words, here's a quote from Rachel Peden. The serene philosophy of the pink rose is steadying. Its fragrant, delicate petals open fully, and are ready to fall without regret or disillusion after only a few days in the sun. It is so every summer. One can almost hear their pink, fragrant murmur as they settle down upon the grass. Summer, summer, it will always be summer. Today's book recommendation is Good Planting by Rosemary Veery. Veery was regarded as the queen of the traditional English country garden. She was known for creating gardens with traditional elements and beautiful plantings. Her gardens are considered timeless, and that makes this book not only a practical reference guide, but a classic 
for your garden library. The best part about this book is that it offers advice for planting in the most difficult areas of the garden. Today's garden chore is to get serious about planting blueberries in your garden. Blueberries provide more than just fruit. They can be an effective screen, they can add greenery to the walls of your house, and they provide massive interest during three seasons of the year. Blueberries have delicate white flowers in the spring, blueberries in the summer, and they have gorgeous fall coloring. Don't forget that blueberries need full sun and they like acidic soil. They're slow to get started. They're considered fully mature at around 8 to 10 years. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today in 1987, the Indianapolis Star announced that the biography of the Indiana botanist Charles Clemens Dean had been published. The book was written by Robert Creeble. Charlie Dean was a self-taught botanist, and he also served as a state forester. And the article shared this memorable story. In his home herbarium, Deem kept a loaded pistol in his desk drawer. One time, Deem and a guest were discussing something about taxonomy, when suddenly Deem quickly opened the drawer, pulled out the gun, and fired two or three shots through the open window, making some disparaging comments about the canine ancestry of a rabbit who had been terrorizing his garden. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org. And be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. While you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join The Daily Gardener community. Just search for these three words, Daily Gardener Community. The group will pop right up and then request to join. Finally, I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, where my fabulous editor is Eric Begay. Have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.